I'm Madison Hamilton, and welcome to O'Laughlin Stadium here in Adrian, Michigan at Siena Heights University. And I'm Kyle Harsick, and the rain has subsided. However, it is a little cold. We are here at practice watching the Siena Heights football team. And welcome to our show, Adapt and Overcome. This season's a little different, wouldn't you say, Madison? Yeah, take a look behind us. You see our guys in masks, six feet, social, social distancing. It's a lot different than years past. Let's get a look on the field with one of our co-anchors, Michael Ramp. Michael? I'm here with head coach Matthew Cohn. Coach, how are you preparing for the spring season? You know, we're able to, to do a lot of things, even under the restrictions that we have. Uh, we have our players in the weight room right now uh, doing strength and conditioning three times a week. We're able to come out on the field, just as we are tonight, another three times a week, uh, get a lot of install in, be able to teach a lot of technique to our players. So uh, we're getting a lot done this fall as we prepare for a, a really tough spring schedule. Well, Coach, obviously COVID has changed a lot of plans this past season. How do you keep your players' heads up during these tough times? You know, one thing we've always talked about in the program, you know, since I've been head coach here, um, is responding to adversity. Whatever that adversity may be, we have to respond to it. We always need the outcome in mind uh, that we want, and we need to make decisions and move forward uh, to reach that desired outcome. And this COVID-19 is just a perfect opportunity for us to respond to adversity. Um, and it's something that, as you know, Michael, changes almost daily with, you know, the protocols and the procedures and the, the new things that are being, being coming out with science and, and all all those things so it's kept us on our toes it's made us adjust to certain things and there's no question it's going to make us much better football team at the end of the day yes coach there is an nfl influence on the field nick stallworth talk about his growth over the years and what has led them to have this attention by nfl scouts well you know nick is is the most recent saint uh to get some nfl action uh, we've had several players come through the program that have received a lot of attention from nfl scouts we've had a few players actually sign nfl contracts go to nfl camps and and have an opportunity to make those squads uh, we've had every team from the nfl have a scout on Doc Dawson Field evaluating our players. Um, I think it speaks to, to the level that our football program has come to. And Nick just happens to be the, the most recent guy and uh, he has really earned every opportunity that, that's come his way. Um, starting as a true freshman, uh, being an outstanding leader in our program, he leads by example in the classroom, he leads by example on what he does off the field and all that stuff carries over and he's a, he's a really good football player. And uh, we're really excited to see what he does his senior year this spring. Well, thanks, Coach Cone. We are really looking forward to see how this season plays out for you guys this year. Now let's send it back to our anchors. Thanks, Michael. Did you know the Saints are ranked 11th in the preseason poll? We'll be right back after the break. You're watching Sienna Heights Adapt and Overcome. I like how the classes are smaller size and there's a lot of clubs and organizations you can get into. Uh, my favorite part about living on campus would be being able to be close to it with all my friends. And uh, you live off campus, you don't get the opportunity, you gotta drive back and forth from Siena to your apartment or whatnot. Right here at school, it's, you know, you got a buddy right down the hallway. Welcome back. The Siena Heights Saints are sitting at number 11 at their highest ranking ever. The boys are sure hungry for more this inning and are not settling for this ranking. Oh no, I think the Saints are ready for more. They came off an uh, offense where they won the battle in the trenches averaging 172 yards per game. And then on offense, they scored 25 points per game. Their defense though was a glaring strength, only allowing 12 points per game. Don't forget, they finished seven and three last season and are returning 20 of their 22 starters. That's gonna make a drastic change for this season. Oh yes, let's go to Michael Ramp with one of our defensive leader who's making waves at his tenure at Siena Heights. Michael? Thanks Kyle, I'm here with Nick Stallworth. Nick, with an NFL resume, 
the experience, and talent returning, what will lead you to a championship this spring? Well, honestly, um, everybody has a job on this team from the first limp, for the first man to the last man. And if everybody does their job, we should be competing for a championship in the spring, no doubt. Nick, with all the returning starters coming back, how strong is the locker room connection? How important will that be to lead you guys to this championship this spring? Oh, it'll actually be very important. Um, everybody in the locker room, from like I said, from the first man to the last man, it's like a family atmosphere. And with that family atmosphere, um, we just, we're just so close and tight-knit that no, nothing can come between us. With your NFL mm -hmm. talent, how will you prepare for the NFL here at Siena in your final season? Honestly, it's a day-by-day -day process, and I'm just taking it one day at a time. And I'm just focused, like I said, day by day, and that's how I'm going about the situation. Well, thanks, Nick. This looks like a very exciting season as well as a very exciting future for you. Best of luck to you and the team this spring. Thank you so much. Thanks, Michael. Nick sounds like a wonderful young man. He's very inspiring. His career is going to take him a lot of places. It's amazing that we have the opportunity to bring in NFL scouts here at Siena Heights and be able to watch players like Nick. Especially during COVID. I can't believe even our own Tristan Kendrick, who is a reporter and a football player, has a story for us. All right, any coughing, shortness of breath, fever over 100, lost your taste or smell or contact with somebody that tested positive in the past 14 days? No, sir. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Yep. So this is where normally the football team comes to put on their helmets, shoulder pads, cleats, things like that. Then we go to the field. We normally have about five minutes. And normally when we're going into the field, we have like offense, offensive line first, and defensive line, and running backs, h backs, you know, stuff like that. And so we come here, put on our equipment, take everything off, put it on the loop, then we get ready to go to practice. Well, having a personal training background, I knew that we were gonna have to train our guys more like in a group X type uh, situation because we don't have a lot of barbells that we can bring out here right away or a lot of the uh, the weights that we usually use in the weight room. So it hasn't been extremely difficult, but it's been a little bit challenging to make sure we can hit all our muscle groups and make sure it's uh, still getting the most out of our workouts without being able to push ourselves a little with high weights. So really it's been more of a cardio type workout, I would say, than a strength training workout. Normally when we come to the locker room, normally we have to get like our loop, which contains like the uh, jersey uh, shorts, this is our helmet, so during the season we have to have this weird type of screening for our helmets because of COVID. It's like weird. So yeah, we put our shoulder pads on. Every group comes in here like one at a time, like running backs, H backs, you know, and everybody comes in, gets their stuff. So typically during a workout, we work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, six, eight, and three groups, 645, 745, 845. So normally what we do is they make us come in the locker room and we'll grab like plates, dumbbells, anything of that you know sort, and then we'll have to walk that way and go outside and work out in the stadium, and work out in the stadium. So we come here and grab the weights. So basically we bring the weight room outside because we can't work out in the locker room. So that's how the locker room is. Right now, if you can see, some people are allowed to work out, but you can only work out in groups of 11. So anytime between seven and four, you can come work out. But that's separate from what we do. The biggest struggle for the football team this year, a lot of kids like to get in the weight room. They like right. to push heavy weight. They like to uh, strength train. And a lot of our workouts, uh, they've been more about fatiguing their muscles mm -hmm. uh, through lots of reps, high reps. And, um, you know, I just know they, they miss the heavy weights there. They kind of meathead sometimes being football players. So right, right. they want to they wanna push heavy weight. So I'd say that's been the biggest struggle so far for us is not being able to be in the weight room. Typically, this is where we do our position meetings. We normally have people draw stuff up and sometimes we have to do quizzes, such as this right here. We do them, turn them in, and the coach is grading. And pretty much, we just, since we're not able to watch like videos and film, we just come here and draw things up on the board. So normally, once we get to the field, Normally, because of COVID, everyone has to stay at least six feet away from each other. However, we still get in groups of, you know, our position groups. It's normally between nine and ten, the groups. So once we get on the field, we have like a little stretch. And normally we'll have maybe, if it's offensive practicing, we'll have the running backs right here. 
the H-backs over there, the offensive line over there, and the quarterbacks in the center of the field. So we still get a good workout in, but everyone has to stay separate. And the same thing goes as far as practice too. This is just typically where the H-backs start our practicing right here. Everyone gets the little area. Basically, our, uh, we like to do everything together on defense and on offense. And when you have to practice in small little groups all the time, I feel it, it just you don't get a whole you know team camaraderie, the whole training together and practicing together. You miss all the little things that go along with playing football in an 11-11 situation. A lot of times we're just the D-line or just the DBs or just the linebackers. It makes it tough to build that cohesiveness as a defense, but lately we've been able to do that with the rule changes, getting us with 50 guys uh, out here at one time. So it's really, uh, it's been better lately than it was early on. I feel very safe. I think the kids feel safe. I think we all feel that with what Siena Heights has been doing, um, it's it, there's no reason not to feel safe because we've taken a lot of precautions. We wear masks while working out. We wear masks while we're practicing. Um, we're gonna have masks on our, on our football. We're gonna have shields on our football helmets. Um, I don't think there's any more they could do to, to make it any safer. Tristan reporting from the locker room. Back to you, Michael. Thank you, Tristan. This really gives us great insight on how great a pandemic can take over this whole year, especially 2020. You're watching Adapt and Overcome. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're so lucky to be here with athletes both on the field and court. Madison, you're a women's basketball player. How's the team looking and handling the pandemic this year? We're looking good, Kyle. Uh, we're coming back strong from this pandemic. We've been practicing outside. We finally got permission to practice inside. It still is no contact, but I'm ready for this season. You're a cheerleader. How is the cheerleading team looking? I've seen you guys everywhere practicing. Yeah, so basically we're just looking for wherever we can find a practice initially, whether it be on the blacktop, on the track, or even in the grass, wherever we felt was safe for our ankles and other body injuries. But fortunately, we were able to get back into our training room and tumble on the pads and stuff. Unfortunately, we are not allowed to tumble as a team or stunt as a team. But we are looking good. We're getting ready. We're getting our jumps prepared. I think we're ready for the season coming up. Well, good luck to you. Uh, Michael, I know that you're a sophomore on the golf team. How's it looking? Well, Madison, things have been going very well so far this fall. Our golf team had our first tournament Saturday, this last Saturday, September 26th at Washtenaw Country Club. Our second tournament will be on October 2nd at Chemung Hills in Howell, Michigan. Back to you, Madison and Kyle. It sure is a lot different this year for every sport with COVID. Now back to our guys on the field. The Saints are slated to play seven games this spring season and finish two and three against these opponents a season ago. However, two of the three of their losses were settled by seven points or less. Yeah, go into that. The Siena Heights Saints started off very strong this past season, going seven, winning seven of their first eight games. However, they started to fall off once winter started coming and it got a little bit colder, losing two of those three games, like we said, by seven points. Let's send it over to our very own Jermaine Shumpert with a very inspiring story. I'm Jermaine Shumpert. I play for the Saints. 
I beat the odds to get where I'm at now. A few years ago, I lost someone close to me that changed everything, but it strengthened my spirituality and pushes me to play and live better. Young Jermaine was kinda unreal as far as the stuff that I can do. I started playing sports when I was in the first grade. I started off playing basketball, and then I started off playing football in the fourth grade. I kinda was great at both, so I didn't know what I wanted to do. But in the fifth grade, I carried my team in both to the championship basketball and football, so that kinda was unreal. High school, Jermaine had to overcome some obstacles. My ninth grade year, I didn't know if I wanted to play varsity, so I started off playing JV. The coach kind of gave me a leadership role because he knew what kind of player I was and my IQ of the game being so high. My 10th grade year, I got injured during football season, so I really couldn't do as much. And then going towards basketball season, I had to have surgery, so I had to sit out the whole basketball season. I really was kind of upset with that. And then going towards my 11th grade year, I got injured the last game of my junior season. I had broke my ankle and I was on crutches for three to four months. And then after that, I had to do therapy three times a week. So high school Jermaine had to overcome some injuries. Going into my senior year, I hurt my ankle again the first game. So I had to sit out three games. And then after that, I was kind of limited wise as far as my reps. So I really didn't have no high school senior film August 8th, 2015, we was all outside over my friend's house. He have a basketball hoop, so we was all outside shooting basketballs, just talking like we normally do. Um, I went in the house to change my shirt. Then I came back outside, him and my other friend, they was gone. And I called them, asked them where they was going, and he said, are we going to a party in Flint? So I knew that was kind of a bad idea, but I let him do him and I told him just stay safe. Around 10 o'clock, I called him again because they wasn't back at home and I know that's not normal. So I called him again and he told me we still over here, I'm with my cousin, so it's not pretty much to worry about. And I said, okay. And that was the last word I heard from him. And I got the call at 3 a.m. saying that he had got shot at the party and that was kind of devastating. I didn't know what to do. And I had to go over to his mom's house and break the news to her, and she was asleep, so she didn't know what to do. And he told her that he was going to a party in another area, so she was really heartbroken. Gabe was like the brother from another mother, if that makes sense. As far as our relationship, we built a bond in elementary. We played on the same football and basketball team since the third, fourth grade. Going towards middle school, we played on the same team, seventh and eighth grade. Our bond got kind of tight going towards our ninth grade year. We started to walk to school together. Then 10th grade year, our bond even got more closer. We started to spend the night over each other's house every weekend, even during school nights. I stayed around the corner from the school, so my mom would let him stay a night in the basement with me. That was like my brother, for real. That was kind of like the rock bottom part of my life. Um, seeing his mama cry, and that was her youngest son, and she treated me like her son too, so till this day, she still called me her son. I still go over there to check on her and stuff like that. But till this day, I still have my days where I feel in a dark place because I was supposed to be go with him that night. I just end up going in the house for not more than a minute and coming out and they was gone. It kind of made me stronger as a man as far as my decision making and what I want to be in life. I kind of look at it as he is my angel. He is looking down at me, guiding me through hard times and whatever I need. I feel like I am him. His mama always tell me she see me through him. And seeing her, how she overcame it, and how strong she is, it made me more stronger. That's the strongest woman I could say that I have in my life. Every year on August 8th, we have a celebration for Gabe. Just positive vibes. This upcoming year was the fifth year that he has been gone, so it kind of was hard for me. The day before, I kind of shed a couple of tears for him. 
This year was kind of more exciting. I seen his mom smiling the much I ever seen her smile before. I miss you, gay. So Sienna Heights kind of picked me. They came on a visit for our quarterback, which is one of my closest friends. And I took that as the opportunity to pull the coach to the side and ask him what is they looking for as far as D linemen or what is the pieces they need. I'm willing to do anything. And the coaches told me they willing to give me a walk-on shot for me walking on and just showing my talent on what I can do. Wow, I really, I really felt, felt the passion and emotion, emotion that Jermaine really brought out in his story, and it really showed the character he's turned into. Wouldn't you say, Madison? Yes, we have our very own Michael Ramp with us. Michael, you did a great job on the sideline. How is our team looking out there at practice today? Well, Madison, I see a lot of energy out on the field today. They are obviously very excited to be back here and getting prepared for the spring season. When I talk to Nick, he is very excited for his own future. As you stated earlier, he is very humble and very excited to see what his team can do this year. And Coach Cohn is also very excited and always, always talk to his players about being um, very composed and adapting to adversity. So Siena Heights football looks very good out there and they are ready to start the spring season. It does look different with the COVID and the six foot like restrictions and everything. I mean, I'm just really proud of them practicing full, co like, full capacity and everything. Exactly. I'm happy to see that they actually can have most of their team out there. Originally, they were supposed to only have 25 people, but as the season went on, COVID started getting more maintained and we started following more guidelines and precautions. It looks great to have everyone out there. Yeah, like Tristan took us in the locker room and how things are changing, like how only a couple of them can go in there. I mean, I can't imagine how, what the stress they're going through, but they're doing what they love, so I think they're doing a great job. And Jermaine Shumpert, how about that story on how he was able to adapt and overcome with the passing of his friend Gabe? He is definitely ready to be performing really well on the field this season. I couldn't agree with you more. And not only are athletes having to adapt and overcome, also our students here at Siena Heights are having to adapt and overcome both in the classroom, transportation, and maintaining social distancing. I'm Kyle Harsick. I'm Michael Ramp. And I'm Madison Hamilton, and thank you for watching Adapt and Overcome.